everybody doing <laughs> let me get something right here real quick that i need to get ready with how's everybody doing i'm oscar blue for border network news at america's voice god bless everybody <clears throat> in my country of mexico god bless my city of tijuana and also god bless the united states of america <clears throat> how's everybody doing Let's thank God for another day for giving us two hands, two legs, a heart that we can feel and a mind that we can think and eyes that we can see. <clears throat> God bless everybody that is watching us. Thank you, Lord, for just another day. For Before I start, man, my God, <clears throat> as I, if you guys have uh, noticed, I haven't been on camera for the last Wednesday, Thursday. Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, for the last three days. So I want to say to everybody for their questions and concerns, uh, I am good. I'm going to be okay, and I am okay. Uh, I had a throat infection. Uh, <clears throat> uh, fortunately, I was in the same vehicle with another individual that uh, it was sick. Uh, I already tested myself. With the COVID factor, it came out negative. Whoever wants to see those uh, tests, uh, I will gladly answer them in box. Uh, but I don't think that I have the necessity or obligation to give uh, nobody an explanation. The only thing to my loyal followers and fans and to our friends and, and Border Network News and also in America's Voice, I had a throat infection. I'm good. Now I can socialize and I can go out. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm getting better day by day. <clears throat> I need to take care of myself. Uh, so uh, we'll be doing a show. I'm doing this show, people. I shouldn't be doing this show uh, to take care of my throat. 
but it is, it is an addiction. I love what I do, and I am uh, I'm laid off right now at work. Uh, they gave me one week for uh, less than that. They gave me like around uh, you know Wednesday to go back to work all the way to Wednesday. <clears throat> so uh, you know uh, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm more than good. I was a little bit concerned. Uh, you know, I had some uh, symptoms, but you know, uh, you guys know that I don't care. Uh, I've been, uh, I've been working on my birthdays, uh, showing you guys the wall. I've been, you know, sometimes you guys have seen me sick and I have been working outside on the field and Tapachula. The first time that I went, I had fever and I had a body ache and I was over there, you know, uh, without no sleep, uh, for 24 hours and working. So, uh, we're going to continue to work. Um, you know, it's just too many, you know, a sickness or whatever it is, uh, you know, a throat infection that I got is not going to stop me from uh, giving you guys the news. So my God, thank you to everybody that has been sending beautiful message to my inbox. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's only a throat infection. Don't be scared. Uh, we're good. Uh, if it was, you know, other thing, I would have come out and I would have said, hey, you know what, guys, this is what it is. Uh, and But uh, fortunately, thanks to God, we've been praying and everything is OK. So we're good. We're ready to roll. God bless everybody that is watching. Thank you so much for your support. God bless my partner, conservative Anthony. Follow him at his platform and Facebook and YouTube and in parlor also. Who? People, <clears throat> I'm going to try to go slow uh, because of my throat. So bear with me with this uh, man, conglomerated news that we got. I miss so much these days, but I've been watching it on video and I've been taking notes meanwhile I'm si I'm laying down in the bed. And there's a lot of things that we're going to talk about. So if you guys want to share this information so we can start. The first topics that we're going to hit is Hong Kong and it's fighting with China. My God, man. How, when, it, when is it going to start? When is it going to stop? When is China going to stop? When is China going to stop? The troublemaker of the world right now. China wants his communist system to be the world system. And, you know, we're going to talk about Hong Kong why they trying to leave China and why every country right now it's getting involved with Hong Kong trying to rescue the people from Kong, Hong Kong not the property trying to, not the country trying to rescue the people and all their economic interests it's unbelievable and all the countries that they want to rescue Hong Kong now China for every communist for every single communist, for every single one, China is the troublemaker of the world. And I wanted to, I wanted to, uh, to read something. We're going to talk about. Uh, first of all, let me get the the topics in line. We're going to talk about Hong Kong uh, fighting with China, cartel leaders in Mexico. My God, there was a massacre of twenty six people. And I will explain why this massacre took place in Guanajuato and why Guanajuato is suffering right now. And I told you guys not that long ago. I told you guys like a couple of weeks ago, because of the arrangements of President AMLO with certain cartels, there is going to be starting a war. Remember that I told you? You guys remember two weeks ago I told you? President AMLO now has preferences on cartel leaders. The problem is that because you have preferences, preferences with cartel leaders, the division starts to happen. And all these preferences, they want to take over land. They want to take over land that is not what they supposed to be belonging to. It's like a cartel of Sinaloa getting into Guanajuato. You know, that's a different organization. So because of AMLO doing all these changes, a war is going to start. And I told you guys, and this is what is happening. Also, we're going to talk about the corruption in the government on the release of a of a really well-known uh, 
you know, cartel member that is called uh, Jose Angel Casarrubia Salgado, better known as El Mochomo. This guy is accused of the assassination of the 43 students of Ayotzinapa and the administration of Peña Nieto. And he got released. And we got the audio on how his mom bribed the fiscal judicial system and the lawyers of the government. We got that audio, so don't don't miss that also. And also, we are going to talk about the caravan, how it got stopped for all those people. They were ignorant people. They were saying, there's not a caravan, Oscar. There's not a caravan. <laughs> it just happened. It was in a caravan. <laughs> and it got stopped. <laughs> how I love when this happens, man. I love when this happens. When all these ignorant trolls, man, they start saying, oh, Oscar is lying about a caravan. It's not coming. And on the same day, bam, mainstream media. The caravan is coming from San Pedro Zula and is walking, and it just got stopped. <laughs> or when they say, oh, there's no Antifa in Mexico. And then you go to mainstream media and there's a big banner that says Antifa in Mexico. You're like, oh my God. <laughs> I go, oh my God, what is it going? When is it going to end, man? When is it going to end? We're going to talk about that. And also, we are going to talk about a topic, people, that nobody is putting attention to because of COVID, because of what is happening in politics. Because the speculation of Joe Biden going up 14% on the polls on Trump. And we're going to talk about the lady, uh, military military lady, uh, by the name of Vanessa Guillen, uh, that she got killed with a hammer. Apparently, the guy, the stalker, uh, suicide himself. But uh, the uh, woman that is uh, that is a suspect by the name of uh, I think it's uh, Cecilia Aguilar uh, faces a count of conspiracy to uh, amper with violence in the in the disappearance of private first class Vanessa Guillen. We're going to talk about that also, and you know nobody's talking about how. A military lady got killed and assassinated with a hammer. So let us just go and start. And I will start with this. Also, we're going to talk about how the first lady of Mexico, my God, how the, oh my, we, ah. this is the most amazing thing. This is the most amazing thing. The most amazing thing is that the, there's no medicine for children with cancer. There's no medicine with children with cancer right now in Mexico. And the tweet that the first lady of Mexico just did for the kids of cancer, it is a full disgrace. A full disgrace. You guys don't even imagine how of a disgrace it is. And I will read it for you. But first of all, let me start with this because we're going to talk about Hong Kong. And let me put this image up of Hong Kong so I can explain to you what is going on in Hong Kong. This is the people of Hong Kong right here. So I will explain for all the liberals and for all the socialists and communist people because they always tell me, learn about what communism is, Oscar. My God, I remember when I was in, it was in elementary when they tell you this. Elementary, then junior high school, then high school, then college. They tell you all about this, all the system, political systematics that they can exist. So for all the liberals, <clears throat> this is what communism is. Communism, political ideology, is a philosophical, social, political, economic ideology and movement whose ultimate goal is the establish establishment of a communist society, namely a socio-economic order structure upon the ideas of common ownership of the means of production and the absence of social classes, money, and state. Everything the same, everything for everybody. The government doesn't have no privileges. 
the privileges are for everybody. There's no rich people. There's only a first class. So what is going on <clears throat> in a nutshell, right? What is going on in Hong Kong, people? This is what is going on in Hong Kong. The UK delivered Hong Kong to China. And Hong Kong was a capitalist system. They have a lot of production. They have a lot of technology. They have a lot, a lot of, man, Hong Kong is rich. But now China, China, the, the one that is having problems with Norway, Italy, Spain, uh, <clears throat> all Europe, the, U, the EU, uh, China that is having problems with the biggest country that exists, the United States of America, China, communist China that is having problems with everybody. Now China wants to take over Hong Kong and tell Hong Kong that their political system, capitalism that is still exists exist in Hong Kong, now they're telling them that they don't want that capital system anymore, that they want to transform Hong Kong and to be a part of the same system as China. What does this mean? It means that a lot of countries around the world, they don't agree with China. And one of them countries that just lifted their hand is the United States that said, excuse me, excuse me, you trying to turn Hong Kong into your communist system? And guess what this Guess what this happened? Get what, guess what the situation exploded into? <clears throat> they did not expect it, this. China did not expect it, this. And this is the magnificent thing about capitalist unification or people that they are against communism and globalization. And I thought that the United States was alone. And I thought that the United States, the President Trump was the only one that was fighting communism and globalization. But now every day you're discovering that more countries are waking up and more countries are understanding that China is the greatest enemy of the world. The, the, the Communist Party of China, not the Chinese people. The Communist Party of China, the snowflakes are going to say, oh my God, he just said that every Chinese is bad. No, 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 no. Don't start with your crime. The Communist Party of China is the enemy of the world. Let's go back in history, people. The UK delivered China, the UK delivered Hong Kong to China. Is it like, okay, go ahead and take it. As long as you don't get in, as long as you don't you don't get your systematical, you know, procedures into Hong Kong, we're good. It's okay, you take it. But now, all of a sudden, China wants to take over Hong Kong. It has been happening. This is why all these protests started happening in Hong Kong. And now, more than ever, <clears throat> is the people of Hong Kong are rising right now, and not they're not alone. <laughs> this is the beautiful thing that we thought that it was only the United States that it was going to stand against uh, communism and globalization. That everybody in the United States was going, is, that the United States of America was the only one that it was standing against communist, communism and globalization. Blue, they take over Hong Kong on July 1st. This is what I'm saying. No, they, this is, Hold on, Denise Pelekia. Hold on, I'm going there. Tranquila, calm down. Calm down. I'm going there. <laughs> Don't burst your bubble. And this is what actually happened. It's not the only country that is supporting Hong Kong right now. So, listen to this. The UK is saying that they don't agree. I'm reading over here. The UK is saying that they don't agree on what China is trying to do to Hong Kong. 
and the violation of their international commerce treaty. And the UK is saying, we will accept all the 2.6 million people that they want to migrate to the UK. Listen to that. We will accept people if they want to migrate to the UK. The UK is supporting the fact that China is incorrect with this. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Not only that, <clears throat> Australia is saying, we will accept you, all the people from, from Hong Kong. We will accept all the 2.6 million that they want to migrate from Hong Kong to Australia. We give you a chance. They know about the potential of the Hong Kong people. They know. So they just told Australia, just told Hong Kong, we will accept you. And also, the European Union <laughs> just told Hong Kong, if you guys want to migrate to Europe, we will accept you also. What does this mean? <clears throat> that the United States lifted their hand. And they said, we will support whoever wants to migrate, not to the United States, but whoever wants to migrate to another country. And if they want to migrate to Australia, to the UK, to the European Union, we will help. As long as the Communist Party of China does not succeed with their systematical procedures that they try to implement on every country around the world with communism. <laughs> so what does this tell you? It tells you that the last one that you never thought, the last one. The last country that you never thought that it was going to lift their hand. The last country that you never thought that it was going to be against China. The last country that you never thought that this, that this, what is happening in Hong Kong, like, what the hell? That country just said that? Wow, there's a lot of countries that they don't want communist China to be succeeding. Guess which country just lifted their hand and said, if you want to migrate to our country, you're more than welcome. Guess who? Guess who? It is a country that it was funded by the first Chinese continental capitalism back in the day. And their, advers their adversary is Pekin. And, uh, and it's a great country. It's 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 a great provider. Guess who? <laughs> this is crazy. This this is crazy. When I heard it, I was like, "What? You gotta be kidding me!" Taiwan. Taiwan also said. Taiwan. Taiwan also said. If you guys want to get out of Hong Kong. And if you want to migrate to our country, we will help. Wow. So now you don't only have everybody is waking up in the world. And everybody is realizing what communist China is doing to the world. Everybody is realizing what communist China is doing to the world. I wanted to answer that comment to the uh, the, the what the, the, to the one to the one that I just told. Hold on, hold on. I'm going there. <laughs> I know where you're. I know where you're going. But hold on. News are going, you know, topic by topic slowly. But God bless you. So you don't. You're not. You don't only have that. The UK 
is saying to to Hong Kong, if you want, if two point six million want to migrate, I got it over here. Come over here. I will help you. And the U.S. was like, "Wow, UK is offering. That's that's great. They want to rescue, you know, the Hong Kongese people from communism. That is great." And then the U.S. it was all along with this because China was violating the international treaties that it was between the U.K. and China. This is a big problem with China and the U.K. It's a huge, huge problem because the U.K. delivered. Hong Kong to China with international commerce treaties. And now China is trying to violate that. So the UK said, you know what? Hong Kong people, if you guys want to migrate to the UK, I got you. And then the United States was like, what? Trump and administration was like, what? The UK just, that is great. And then not only that, Australia comes into the play, too. And then Australia lifts their hand and says, no, UK, you're not the only one. I know the Hong Kongese people have enormous talent, enormous capabilities of work. So I'll lift my hand and I'll say, all the 2.6 million, if they want to migrate, they can migrate to my country also. And we have a lot of work and we have job openings and we will take care of them. United States was like, what the hell? You guys are helping now. I'm not the only one that is a provider to the world. I know that you guys are also capitalists. I know that you guys can take, you know, can help us out. I know that you guys can take care of people also. United States was like, whoo, my God. All right. And then you get the EU, the European Union, just lifted their hand and said, you know what? United States, you know what, UK, you know what, Australia, I got you also. We will support you. If you guys want to migrate, I got you. Migrate all those 2.6 million. What the hell? Everybody's like, what's going on? And not only that, lastly, and surprisingly, to everybody in the world, Taiwan lifted their hand and said, if you want to end this slavery with communism, you can migrate to our country also. What does this tell you, people? <laughs> this, is ha this is happy moments. It tells you that the United States of America is not the only one that is fighting against the Communist Party of China. This is a step down, and it is a statement for the Communist Party of China to realize that the United States is not alone. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. Guess what, Communist Party of China? Guess what? The United States is not alone. And everybody wants to end communism. And... President Trump is not alone. The UK, Australia, the EU, Taiwan, all of them together. And what is this? What is this potentially on a bad note? What does this tell you? It can lead to disagreements and can lead to really big disagreements because this is. This is all trade, and it starts with trade, it starts with international relations, and it all ends up in politics. It all ends up in politics. And after this, <laughs> after all of this, after all of this that started happening, guess who came out? Guess who? Guess who came out? After all of this news started happening, Mr. Joe Biden. <laughs> and Mr. Joe Biden that asked him, hey, what is going on? You know, the situation in Hong Kong and la, 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 la. And guess what Joe Biden said? Just so you guys know how he is so clueless about what is happening in the world. Guess 
That's what Joe Biden just said. They ask him about Hong Kong. They ask him about how the China, Communist Party of China is trying to take over Hong Kong now and trying to turn it into communism and how, you know, la, 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 all the countries are supporting now President Trump. A lot of countries are supporting President Trump. And he immediately, because Joe, we all know Joe Biden kisses China's butt. But now they asked him this, and guess what he said? He said this. Although unemployment in the United States is 11.1%, and us, saying Democrats, uh, you know, we know that President Trump has spent so much money in the pandemic, and it hasn't gone well, $7.1 trillion. And we know that we are up 14% and the elections and the polls, uh, we don't understand, you know, how President Trump wants to hold rallies still. That was not the question. Why are you not answering about China, Biden? That was not the question. They ask you, what is your opinion on China trying to take over Hong Kong and trying to turn it into a communist country? Why you answer with $7.1 trillion that they just has spent in the pandemic that you guys were pushing the president to spend more money, more money because he was not taking care of situations. And when he took care of the situations, you guys are saying that he's doing too much, that he's doing so many testing. So he got to slow down on testing because it's cranking the numbers up. So he slows down on testing. And then you're saying that he's not doing things well. And then he gives the equipment and he gives, you know, he gives, you know, uh, he gives all the equipment to Cuomo and Cuomo says, well, we don't have it. And then, oh, my God. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. This is what it tells you, people, that this is what they are going to do when something of China it gets out there. And immediately when they ask this question, they're going to try to talk about other topics. And they're not going to talk about what is really happening how China is violating the international treaty with the UK on how to treat Hong Kong. It's amazing. It's amazing. How's everybody doing? God bless everybody that is watching. I'm Oscar Blue for Border Network News at America's Voice. That was our first topic. We're going to talk about our second topic. And is this cartel member by the name of El Marro. By the name of El Marro. And let me get right here into the screen so I can start. You know, this is clip number two. So let me get right here to the screen so we can start talking about this guy. This guy, people. This guy right here. This is the guy. Let me just. Uh... <clears throat> Let me just put this guy right here. This guy, better known as El Marro, cartel member, better known as El Marro. This cartel member that his mother was uh, captured uh, last week, around uh, more than seven to ten days ago. His mother was captured and then all their family members were captured. He made a really viral video on, on YouTube telling the government crying that if they, if they wouldn't release uh, his mother, he will start a bloodshed on the whole city. Due to the fact, uh, he, the, the government, did not comply with the government of Mexico, did not comply with his uh, demands, and he killed more than 100 people in one week. More than 100 people in one week. All the deaths are related to the cartel that he organizes that is the cartel that steals massive gasoline in Guanajuato. It is a big, big cartel. This guy is no joke. This guy is really dangerous. And this is the uh, the note that talks about 
when they released uh first let me talk about this this right here this is what happened let me just see which one is it so we can talk about it this right here violence in Guanajuato El Marro he at he personally says that he killed three police officers he personally says that he he killed three police officers after the negotiation started in the Guanajuato. Let me just find uh, another one that is really important that I find this note because it's the one that is uh, referring to uh, the killings, not only of, uh, you know, of uh, the killings, not only of three, but is the assassinations of more than a hundred people and I don't know where I put it. So let me just find it real quick right here, people. Uh, I think uh, right here, right here. We got it right here. I'm sorry about that. We're, uh, we're back again. This is the threats and, and the confrontations a hundred assassinations in a week, the crisis, the crisis of violence in Guanajuato. So this guy, they captured his whole family. They captured his mom. And he said, if you don't release my mom and if you don't let go of my whole family, I will start killing people. Remember how the president of Mexico released Vidio Guzman from the cartel of Sinaloa and he told everybody, you know what? I released Ovidio Guzman from the cartel of Sinaloa because I didn't want no bloodshed to be on the streets of Sinaloa. So I released them. That people in a meeting that it just occurred uh, not too long ago, uh, two days ago, in Congress, with also uh, international officials from the United States, they are mad. <coughs> they are mad as hell that the president of Mexico took the decision on. He was admitting to it last week. That he was the one that released Ovidio Guzman, the son of El Chapo Guzman, not too long ago. So he was the one that said, you know what, I'm going to release him because I don't want to bloodshed in the streets. The authorities of the United States in this international convention, they are so mad at the president of Mexico. Why? Because this capture of his son, it was meaning that it was going to be extradited to the United States for questioning and also poor alliance and killings of assassinations and also for drug trafficking of micro tons of cocaine into the United States. Due to the fact he released him to the population again. The question is now not only from the government of the United States of intelligence, but also for intelligence that it works in Mexico, why he did not release the people or that they were arrested by the, fam the family members of El Marro. He did not release them. And then you get this, you get a hundred assassinations, a hundred assassinations in, in one week by this guy. This is the guy. A hundred of them. Unbelievable. Not only that, after her mom gets released and they come to a negotiation with the government, uh, when uh, I see a, a message from my moderator, excuse me, I will read it. Some of the people are telling me that they can see this live. Please help share the groups. Looks like Oscar is being shadow banned. Oh, yeah, all the time. Whoever wants to share this, it will be great. But that is uh, liberal Facebook. Uh, so, you know, we will try to do it as much as we can. So this is the guy, El Marro. Now, El Marro, after coming to negotiations, after uh, one week of bloodshed, he says to the government of Mexico, you will release my family or I will continue. So the government of Mexico said, OK, I will release all your family gradually, but please stop. And what do you think? This is why. So this is why I love the United States, how they handle things with terrorists. The United States of America says this. 
Rasa Keaton says, does, does that include the 24 killed in the rehab facility? Hold on. I will get right into that. Slow down, people. There's a lot of news that I have been I haven't been given to you guys in the past in the past three days. I have actual video about that situation, and it has a lot to do with other cartel organizations. Remember that I told you guys two weeks ago, because of the agreements that President AMLO has specifically with two organizations, giving them the preference and giving them more authority than the other ones, there is going to be wars. This is another organization that you're talking about, Rose Keaton, of the 24 people that they just got killed on a rehab center. And I will explain how these rehab centers are being used to house sicarios and to house drug dealers. And they are fake rehab centers. So just hold on to that. So this is El Marro. So they come to an agreement to release his family. They release their family. And this guy, the United States of America tells you, this is not the United States, I'm in Mexico, but the United States of America tells you, you know what, we don't negotiate with terrorists. We don't negotiate with terrorists. And Mexico committed the mistake of negotiating with terrorists. And after their family members get released, get guess what happens? The officers that detained the family and the organization that detained the family of El Marro, he kills three of them. He kills three officers. He doesn't comply with the agreements that they were having. He doesn't comply with the agreements that said, you know what? Okay, we will keep it between us. All right, I will stop the killing. All right, everything is going to stop. No. He goes and backstabs the government like a terrorist does, and he kills three police officers. And here's the, here's the note, and I will translate. And... <clears throat> <clears throat> en una emboscada, hombres armados asesina, asesinaron este lunes a tres policías en Silao. En Silao. And in ambush, three men assassinated three police uh, uh, men, armed men assassinated three police officers in a part of Silao, Guanajuato. This entity in this place, it is, you know, badly heard of the organized crime and the violence that is occurring in you know, in this particular state of Guanajuato, the cartel leader of Santa Rosa de Lima, that is El Marro, he said that those three murders were direct orders from him. El Diario Reforma, the newspaper Reforma, uh, publicly said how the organized attack was, you know, done. The individual vehicles uh, took, uh, they were getting close to the police officers, and from there, they ambushed them, and they killed them, assassinated them. So, what does this tell you? <laughs> what does this tell you? Oh, my God. Mexico, no te acabes. Mexico, lindo y querido. Si muero lejos de ti. Que digan que estoy dormido y que me traigan aquí. My God, how does this hurt our country? And you wonder why President Trump wants to designate these people as cartel, you know, as terrorists. And you still wonder why President Trump is designating all of these organizations and all of these people as terrorists. And you still are wondering why President Trump can is designating every single organization of cartel or organized crime in Mexico as terrorists. And you still wonder why President Trump is saying these are groups of terrorists. They're not supposed to be taken lightly. And you still wonder why? <laughs> and in that same state, my God, let me see right here, the other note. I got it right here. Hold on. Hold on. And in that same state, 
we got another guy. Ah, we got another guy. And in that same state. And I told you guys. I told you guys clearly. This is going to start happening. There's going to be a war that is going to start happening. And in that same state, in that same state, this happened. Let me see if I can open this. Yes, I can. In that same state, this happened. This is <coughs> a guy by the name of Jose Angel Casarrubia Salgado, better known as El Mochomo. This guy is from an organization that is called Guerreros Unidos, that is Warriors United. And he is uh, accused of a lot of cartel activity, huachicoleo that is stolen gasoline, and also the assassination of 43 students that it went worldwide news and the administration of the <coughs> last president that it was Peña Nieto. This is actual video, people. I will stop and translate. This is what happened. He got detained, <coughs> but <coughs> he got detained, but this is what happened. <coughs> After he got detained, a lawyer from the fiscal judicial system inside of the government had an agreement with his mother to release him under amounts of millions and millions and millions of pesos. That is crazy. And this is actual video of him being arrested. <coughs> and I will uh, translate. Let me put it on screen right there. They order to release uh, Jose Angel Casarrubias El Muchomo because they didn't have enough proof. Look at that. Uh, federal uh, federal uh, agents, they confirmed that, you know, the, the, uh, the federal defense of this guy, the Muchomo, was the one that started with this corruption, an approach to the lawyers of the fiscal judicial system. Doesn't this remind you about the same thing that happened with the past cartel member that I just shown you? That they had under the table agreements? This is all happening in Guanajuato. Apparently there is a war right now in Guanajuato between two cartels. <coughs> Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación. <coughs> And also, these cartels, it is Santa Rosa de Lima, that this cartel is mostly known to be stealing gasoline. It's a really hard business. Trillions, trillions of pesos are the ones that they are making. Let us go a little bit on the video, and I will show actual video of the mom talking to a fiscal, fiscal judicial lawyer trying to negotiate on how they're going to pay up the government, <clears throat> how to pay up the government uh, for all of that. Oscar, are you poisoned? What kind of comment is that? <laughs> if I was poisoned, I wouldn't even be here. So let us go again. Due to this, uh, to this agreement, uh, this corrupt agreement, they find to uh, release the guy for 40 more days until they find enough, enough proof. And the time that they are going to try to search for another arrest warrant for this guy. But for different, different accusations and also <clears throat> for different uh, and also for uh, different 
uh, different charges. This is amazing. Why are you coughing? I just did, uh, you know, an explanation in the morning. I have a throat infection. Oh my God, I'm not going to keep explaining this. All right. So let's get right back into the news. So this is uh, this is what 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 just happened. They released this man under a corrupt agreement. And I will show you right now what was the corrupt agreement. This is her mother negotiating people. This is her mother negotiating with the lawyer. Look at this. And I will stop and I will translate. The guy that is speaking is the lawyer from the fiscal judicial system in the government of Guanajuato. And he's just saying, <clears throat> the person that I just spoke to is, uh, he, uh, he told me that if we can advance with the economic uh, adjustment, this the person that is going to answer on the other side of the phone is the mom. Uh, the guy is saying, the lawyer is saying, uh, they just said if we can advance with the economical agreement. And, you know, although he they uh, made an appointment at six o'clock in the afternoon. Rem remember that we had an agreement. You give me my son, I will give you the money. Dando y dando. It's, in a, it's a terminology in Mexico for saying, you give me, I'll give you. We are not going to back up. We are going to comply with the agreement. We are going to comply. But we agreed on you give me, I'll give you. Yeah, well, you know, this is the mom right here. And then the lawyer says, okay, if you had that agreement, let me just tell you that a little bit of the plans change. So this is the way that we're going to do it. And, you know, the main lawyer is going to tell us tomorrow when he's coming out of the signatures of his release paperwork. So I can just call you and tell you that the release paperwork is being done so you can deposit. And that particular moment we see each other and we come to an agreement. So, the, you know, the government will give you, you know, the what your son and you will give us what the amount. We already had an agreement. We already talked about it. This is already done. We already talked about it several times. You gave me, I'll give you. That was the agreement. And we are not going to be backstabbing you. We're going to come to the same agreement. This is unbelievable. This is un. Believable people. Corruption to the finest extent. <clears throat> to the finest extent. How the mother of every cartel member is involved now. We saw President Amlo shaking hands with the mother of El Chapo. I'm taking decisions on how this is going to be you know, the protection of his son, and if he she can get the permission to go see El Chapo's mom. <laughs> and now we got El Marro's mom, the past uh, cartel member that I just told you, that she got captured. She got released, and this guy started saying, you know what, I'm not going to kill more officers, and then he kills three. And now we get this guy, by the name, a nickname of El Mochomo, one of the leaders of Cartel Santa Rosa de Lima, and the, her mom is the one that is taking the decisions and telling, you know what, we already had an agreement where millions and millions of pesos, and yes, I was going to say, you know, dando y dando, that that is, you give me, I'll give you. You give me, I'll give you. 
And, you know, amazingly, <laughs> they come to an agreement and they release. President AMLO just gave a statement uh, not too long ago with this uh, audios that they were released. And President AMLO didn't have no other option by coming clean, saying, you know what? We are going to do as much as we can to come to clean this corruption, to find, uh, you know, to find the, the alternative to finding who started this corruption, who was the part of the government, uh, you know, uh, part of uh, the corruption, who started the corruption. And after this, we're going after the heads of the officials that were part of this corruption. Now. All of this is happening in the safe state of Guanajuato. All of it. And I told you guys, there's going to be a cartel war not too far away from now. I told you this. And this is what just happened with a massacre of 26 people yesterday. Massacre of 26 people at a rehab center. Let me just go right here back. To find the clip. Right here. Yes. This is what just happened at a rehab center in Guanajuato, Mexico. Now, for everybody that hasn't heard about this massacre, there were 26 people that they were in a rehab center. These videos together, they are going to be explained how they are using the cartel organizations, how they're using rehab centers for housing sicarios or drug members or, you know, a drug house. This is why they went and attacked the 26 people that they were there inside of this rehab center. The videos explain for themselves that this hasn't been the first time that the cartel has attacked rehab centers in Guanajuato. This is the fifth time that they have attacked rehab centers because of the cartel agreements because of sicarios are hidden there, because a lot of these rehab centers are not even registered, so they use it as a smoke screen to make people think that they're helping when they're not. They're housing sicarios and they're housing killers. This is what happened. We're going to go step by step on these videos, and I will translate each and one of us, each and one of them. This first video is, you know, two mothers talking about their sons inside that rehab center where the massacred just occurred in Guanajuato, the same state where El Marro, the cartel huachicolero, stealing gasoline member of El Marro's, just killed 100 people in less than a week. The same state where I just shown you El Mochomo, a cartel member also that just bribed the judicial system with actual audio of his mother trying to bribe the federal system. The same state that just killed 26 people at a rehab center at a massacre. This is the information. It says Doña Lupita was living at the part of close to the rehab center that is called Anexo. This is a horrible image, people. And I'm standing right here and I'm telling you guys, this is a horrible image. This is the image inside of the rehab center. This is what they did. They put, they told everybody, lay down. And after they lay down, they shot every single one of them. Every single one of them. This is actual video and actual photographs of inside the rehab center, how the bodies were let there, how the bodies were shot, and how, you know, the organized crime went in there and killed every single one of them.
You're saying that one of the victim's mom uh, went to the forensics, and this is what she said. Uh, my nephew, you know, I'm going, I'm going uh, to pick him up. The forensics are going to let us, uh, you know, get the body. The mom is really sad, you know, uh, we, she's really sick uh, about this news about his son uh, being uh, assassinated inside the shelter. She's carrying uh, some pills that the doctor just gave her. Uh, the mother of the uh, one of the people that they got assassinated by her name is Sylvia. Uh, had only one week that just uh, rehab uh, his son inside of this rehab center. Imagine they just killed my son. You're asking me how I feel. Imagine I don't have my son anymore. To go to the rehab center and to kill them as they were animals. Imagine how I feel. You know, although that one of the worst attacks uh, that it just occurred right here in the history of this state. The shelter re recovering uh, from my life, it looked empty. That is the first clip of this uh, of this uh, massacre that has just occurred uh, yesterday by cartel members again. This rehab centers are being used as smokescreen to rehab people, but they're not having rehab people in there. They're using them to house sicarios for the cartel members, so they will make it look like it's a rehab center. This is not the first time that it has happened in Guanajuato. This is the fifth time, the fifth time that it has happened in Guanajuato. Let me just go and put uh, clip number two of this investigation. <clears throat> this is clip number two. Uh, and the investigations of the fiscal authority, they're saying that at least seven gunmen participated in this massacre. They use uh, that they utilize two vehicles, and that they open the doors, uh, you know, uh, hitting them and destroying them. And they reunited all the twenty-eight young kids that they were, or young, uh, you know, youngsters that they were in that particular shelter. And they put and they told every single one of them lay down on the floor. Some of the women that they were inside of this rehab center, they were released free. This is the secretary of the city of Irapuato. His name is uh, Pedro Cortez Zavala, and he's saying they told them to lay down on the floor, and they decided to shoot. As part of the investigations, they are looking for the owner of the rehab center. And, you know, anonymously, <clears throat> another representative of another shelter of rehab center, he said this. <clears throat> And he said that he expressed his fear due to what is occurring right now in this rehab center. So <clears throat> for everybody that is doubting what President Trump is saying, that these people are not supposed to be held accountable as terrorists, for God's sake, people, what if happens in Syria? What happens in Iraq? What happens in Afghanistan? Don't they kill these kind of don't you, they have this kind of situation <clears throat> in this uh, in their countries? 
Don't they kill with this coldness over there also? Let's go to clip number three of this investigation as is uh, as it's going to get better right here. And this is practically what I was saying about how many shelters of this ones have been used as smoke screens to make people believe that they are rehab centers, but they're not. They're housing sicarios and they're housing drug dealers in these rehab centers. This is clip number three. In the last five months, five shelters of rehabs have been under attack. The first attack was on the 4th of December, 2019. A convoy of vehicles, they, they kidnapped 20 young uh, uh, rehab, uh, the, uh, rehab inmates uh, from, uh, from this particular shelter. 13 of them were, uh, were, were sent free. The other ones were found dead. And the first thing that this guy is saying, the fiscal general of Guanajuato, Carlos Samarripa is saying these shelters are being used for distribution of drugs. The 8th of February of 2020, another group uh, went into another rehab center. The rehab center is by the name of uh, Starting a New Life. Uh, they took, they kidnapped five uh, people that they were inside this shelter and they burned the whole place. Hours later, four of the people that they were kidnapped uh, found dead in the streets. This is another one. And on the day of the 26th of February, 2020, uh, 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 old gunman also arrived to this shelter that is without hope. There's no addiction. And they shot one man. The fourth attack that just occurred on the 6th of June on 2020. With, you know, a group of assassins assassinated uh, 10 people inside of this shelter. And this is another part on Guanajuato that is the neighborhood uh, named by uh, 24 de Abril. So, people, if you want to know what really is happening in our country, what really is happening in our country, I told you guys two weeks ago, two weeks ago, I told you guys, this is going to happen. There's going to be a cartel war between two organizations that they are not happy with each other. And one of them is trying to take over a state which it does not belong to them. And as they are going in, there's going to be a war. There's a comment right here that is pretty assertive. Reina Sofia says, let, it, let us not lose our law and order in the U.S. <laughs> Defund the police. Dismantle the police. If you defund the police and dismantle the police, exactly, Sofia, this is what is going to happen to the United States of America. All of this is what these communist people and all of these liberal liberal people and socialist people and globalist people want. They don't want law and order. They want their own law and order. They want their own authorities. They want to re 
start the authority, like what this just happened to the NFL. My God, I just listening to that and reading that. Now the NFL is going to have their own black uh, national anthem. You got to be kidding me. What are you? A black American only? Or you're just not going to call yourself an American all, uh, all of a sudden? You're not a United States citizen anymore? So if, if you're going to have your own national anthem, please make your own national country. How in the hell is that possible? That is a complete disrespect to the United States of America and to the country and to the national anthem. That is a complete disrespect. It's Black Lives Matter Marxist system. It's a complete disrespect to the sovereign nation of the United States of America and also to the Constitution and also to the country and everybody that loves that country. My God, may I... I May I not remind you to all the NFL football players that you live out of capitalist dollars. May I not remind you that you get paid millions of dollars to play in a capitalist country. You want to live under a communist system? You want to get paid exactly as every other person? It is a total disrespect. I'm putting another national anthem in the national anthem of the United States of America. Whoever agrees with this, whoever agrees with this, is a complete disrespect. My God, people. When is the United States going to take enough? When are your real patriots are going to stand up? Facebook is not going to help. It is unbelievable. It is exactly what happened in Chas and Chop. All these punks, these activist punks, living out of seven blocks and saying that it's a country. The first thing that they put is a wall. You're a joke. Criticizing a wall in the border, but you're you're putting your own wall to be protected by capitalists. The hell, who cares about you? Second of all, you're living out of capitalist electricity. You're living out of capitalist water. You're living out of capitalist food. You're living out of capitalist laptops. You're living out of capitalist phones. You're living out of capitalist internet. And also, anti capitalist. And also now you put, you want to live out of uh, an anti uh, anti national anthem. You want to implement your own national anthem in the NFL? For God's sake, who are these people? My God, a total disrespect. That is a total disrespect to the. It's not only to the Democrats, to the Republicans, to the Independents, to the Liberals. It's a total disrespect to the country. Total disrespect. I don't care, really, if communism works, if socialism works, if capitalism works. Really, that I don't give an F. I will tell you that. The most disrespectful thing is that... All you people are letting this happen. What are you going to complain? You're going to complain on Facebook still? You're going to let these people put another national anthem on top of the national anthem that all your soldiers have died to save the United States of America? To give you freedom for your four founding fathers, for your independence. And now there's another national anthem that is going to take that because of George Floyd. George Floyd, a guy that passed away wrongfully, but never what he gave his life for America. No, no, get the hell out of here. My God, people, when? When? When the best country that exists in the world, the United States of America, and people are not doing anything about it. 
Look what is happening to our country. No law, no order, corruption. That is what is going to be your next neighbor now. It, is, it gets me to a point that I don't really understand. I don't really understand. You get these liberals that they're out there defending what they think. And they're defending their idea. You get all these communists that they are out there defending what they think and they're defending their idea. You get all these socialists that they're out there defending what they think and they're defending their idea. You get all these globalists that they're out there defending what they think and they're defending their idea. And you get all these conservatives that they're fighting between conservatives and they're not out there defending the principles of defending their country. Fighting between them. I'm who is right and who is wrong. Instead of fighting against this system that wants to destroy your country, they're fighting between each other. And nobody's doing anything about it. Stop and go for the right particular purpose that is defending your flag, defend your constitution, defending your amendments. This is an insult. What the NFL is trying to do right now to your country is an insult. Stand. Stand with your country and fight for your country, for God's sakes. Stop being lazy and stand. Are you going to let all these liberals and all these socialists and globalists step all over your constitution and your flag? My God, you're the greatest country that exists in the world and you're letting this happen. I told you guys, this is crunch time. Last time that I talked to you guys, it was not in 2018. We were talking about, oh, yeah, we got this election, Oscar. We got it. Trump is going to win by a landslide. Don't worry about it. 2019. Oh, don't worry about it, Oscar. We're getting there. A lot of patriots are waking up. Don't worry about it. 2020. Boom. In your face. And everybody's surprised. Oh, my God, China. What is China doing to us? Oh, my God, China is completely destroying us. Oh, my God, you know, this is a pandemic. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, nothing. Stop the crying, start acting. Stop the complaining, start acting. Start being pampered, start acting. This is the time. There's no tomorrow. There's no two weeks from now. There's no one month from now. There's no two weeks from now. There's no three, six months right now. It's in November. It's right in the corner. Elections are coming for your country. And Joe Biden accordingly to fake polls. Those are fake polls, Oscar. Everybody can make polls, Oscar. You know, those are like, those are Democrats, Oscar. The same thing happened with Hillary, Oscar. Those are not justifications. Right now, this other... This dumbass of Joe Biden is up 14 points according to this fake polls. Whether you want to call them fake, whether you want to call them real, whether you want to call them whatever you want to call them. I don't even care. He's up 14 points. This dumbass pedophile Sleepy Joe is up 14 points. There's no tomorrow. There's no, let me just, we're going to get him on 2020, Oscar. We'll wait till November, Oscar. You know, the pandemic, it is not letting us out, Oscar. We got to wear a mask, social distance. I hell with that. You're letting the system beat you. You're letting these ideas beat you. You're letting the control over with you. You're letting the communists win over your capitalist system. 
you're you're letting the globalism step all over your constitution you're letting George Soros let all these activists and all these protesters run your cities. You're letting the Socialist Democratic Party step all over your constitution and say to the world, the United States is not respected because they're trying to defund the police and dismantle the police. You're letting all these Democrat Socialist liberals not respect the law and order in your country. You're letting all this happen. And you guys are not doing anything, damn it. It's time. It is time. I'm worried about this. This, I've been worried since I have been raised, since I have used a conscience. This, this, I love my flag. I love my country. My country is rotten right now with socialists, with Democrats, with cartels, with liberals from the United States. For God's sake, my country has foreigners helping foreigners in a foreign country, violating and instigating migrants for everything. Will Patters, whenever you want to talk, brother, another racist mother effort with a TV show. I'm not, I don't have a TV show, brother. I'm an independent reporter and broadcaster. You want to have a debate? What racist? I'm brown. You stupid dumbass. I'm brown. What racist? What racist? Yo nací en Mexico, cabrón. I was born in Mexico. What are you talking about racist? I live over here. You don't live over here, right? You live in the United States? When you make capitalist dollars, you make 20, 100 a week. 200, 300, 500 a week. You live in a nice neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah, you live in a nice neighborhood. You drive your nice car with your monthly payments and your apartment and your apartment complex where there's no shootings and there's no dismantled bodies outside of your house. You live for you, you can go to the drive through right? And order a number four Cars Junior, double bacon, western bacon, with an extra Chris, Chris Cut fries and a soda. Oh, you got $20 on your pocket, right? That's real easy to pay. You live over there, right? Will Pelters? You live over there? In the nice country of the United States of America? You live over there, right? Because I live over here when we eat beans, rice, and tortillas. What is the real situation? And you live on capitalist America when you are enjoying all of that. No me vengas con tontadas y mamadas. A la chingada como vas. Don't call me here with your Democrat talk. Don't come here with your Democrat talk. It's not going to work on this Mexican. It's been working for more than 40 years. And that BS is not going to work anymore. What you guys who have done? What the Democrats have done for Hispanics? Tell me, what, what? What? Immigration reform, what? What? Tell me what? You, Black Lives Matter, what have you done to for Hispanics? One time that you have protested for all the Hispanics that they have died crossing the border illegally or all a, a, a Hispanic have, that, that has been killed unjustly for abuse of power and abuse of authority in the borders or whatever. When Black Lives Matter has protested for us. When? We'll talk about racists. Shut the hell up. If you disagree with every, if you disagree with every Democrat, if you disagree with every single Democrat, they tell you that you are racist. You cannot tell me that I am racist. De la pelas. Here, right here, you're not going to tell me. Because I live in Mexico. Because I am a Mexican citizen. Because I was born in my country of Mexico and I love my country. The, Dem the racists are you, Democrats. You, that we, if you don't agree with your agenda, we are racist. What? Should I live in the systematical, you know, uh, agenda that you guys want? To defund the police? To dismantle the police? What is that going to do, dumbass?
Do you know what is happening in Mexico right now with that? Do you know what is happening in Mexico, you dumbass? Do you actually know? That's what you want? A social democratic system? Do you know what is happening in Venezuela, dumbass? Do you know what is happening in Cuba, Nicaragua, in Argentina? That's what you want? We have been under this stress, man. You know, when we go to court and when they when they give us a sentence, they give us more of a sentence for the same crime, man. And then the white man gets a sentence for like 12 months and we get a sentence for like 24 months. That's unfair, man. That's because he's white, man, and I'm brown. Get there. Stop crying. Stop crying. No sea niña. Stop crying. This is the time for all of you people to start to understand, to start to understand that if you guys still are comfortable, if you guys are comfortable right now like this guy, that he lives in capitalist America, and drives a really, really nice capitalist car. You guys want this to continue. Stay on your seats. And don't do anything. Continue. Please continue to not do anything. Not do anything. Don't do anything, guys. Keep, keep being on your houses without doing anything. Not calling your local GOP and put them to work. Hey, get to work, man. You're living out of my taxes. Get to work. I want this to be concern. It's a concern. It's a concern. You okay, uh, you okay sir? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm more than okay. Linda Horn, let's riot. No, that's not the solution. What the hell? We're learning about not rioting and you're giving a riot. No, that's not the solution. The rich man in America won't stand. It's going to be the poor people who can make that difference. We need to change that. We need to change that. And I will tell you why, James Walker. I will tell you exactly why. You're right about something. The rich man is comfortable of their capitalism and their winnings. But when socialism comes, when socialism comes and communism, if it comes to America, now they're going to protest. Hmm, que si no. <laughs> they're going to protest. You're man, you're taking away my winnings. What's going on with this all this same, you know, economy? Everything for this everybody the same? No, 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 no. No, no, no. You're affecting my pockets. No, no, no. Where am I supposed to go? They told you like two years ago, they were telling you to go there and protest or not protest. Just stand for what is right. That is, you know, against socialism and communism to going back. Yeah, but I was busy, man. I was traveling. I got my business going. And now you're not going to have a business, man. It's going to be done. No, you're not going to have a business. This has nothing to do with social classes. Has nothing to do with the low class, middle class, and high class, and the 1% class. Has nothing to do with that. It has to do with everybody uniting for the same purpose that is saving your country. <clears throat> it has to do with you. It has to. It has not. It has nothing to do with you know high class, middle class, low class. No. It has to do if you own Walmart, grab my hand, or whoever you own. You know you own a a local business that is you know that is millions of dollars. Grab my hand, brother. And then you got the ice cream man over here. Grab my hand, brother. We're together in this. Because if you don't provide economy, I don't make money also. 
and the citizen gets affected in the middle. So that is what it is, people. It's crunch time. You guys are letting too much time pass. Elections are coming. They're going to try to put you on this bubble right now. And they're going to try to put you on this bubble that is not going to let you guys out to vote. That's why Joe Biden is saying that he doesn't want to do no campaign tours. He doesn't want to do no campaign events. Because he says that the prevention, he's trying to get stop the prevention from COVID. Number one. <clears throat> So if he's trying to stop the prevention by COVID, why are you supporting Black Lives Matter and why are you supporting all these uh, Antifa organizations that they are, you know, in the middle of this, you know, infection, protesting side to side together? It's just stupid. So what Joe Biden is trying to do is keep everybody in their houses, scare everybody off. So when Trump is doing their events and public events, they can blame all the other infection. And the numbers in the New York New York Times are going to say they're going to go up. Brrr, and the numbers of COVID, this just in, the numbers of COVID are, have gone up because President Trump is doing rallies at every country. He's not like Joe Biden. Joe Biden is not doing rallies. And because Joe Biden is not doing rallies, he's the perfect candidate. He cares about humanity. He cares about America. He wouldn't handle the pandemic, the pandemic, differently. That's what they're going to try to put next time. It depends on your narrative. It depends on you getting out of your uh, out of your couches and express what is really happening. Call your GOPs. Call your government officials. Call your people that they live out of your taxes and say to them, this is what is going to happen. This is what I want. And I want to go out there and vote. Why are you guys not stopping the Democrats? Why are you guys not stopping all these socialists? What is going on? Defend your constitution. Defend your country and defend your flag. This is what is going on. Marcy Sias, I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm voting. God bless you. There's certain points right here. And remember, I'm not a Democrat or a Republican. I'm an independent. So don't get into your feelings with me when I'm telling you guys what is going to happen. Don't get into your feelings with me. Sometimes Republicans are really like, no, you're wrong, Blue. No, you're wrong. No, 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 you're wrong. You know, the president said this and it's no, 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 no. Justification on top of another justification. No. Reality, reality, like it is. God bless everybody that is watching. How's everybody doing? I'm Oscar Blue for Border Network News and America's Voice News. <clears throat> Sorry uh, for everybody that it was concerned. I had a throat infection, but I'm good. As you can see, sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in a straight arrow, but sometimes I go a little bit sideways because <clears throat> I'm having a rusty voice, but I'm okay. I can continue to do my show and I can continue to work. I'm not going to stop because of a stupid throat infection. <clears throat> I will take care of myself. You know, after I do a show, I will rest my voice. And then on, later on, I will uh, <clears throat> rest a little bit more and do a Mexican, uh, do a Spanish show. Last notes. Last notes that I want to handle on another topic. Last notes. This goes out for all the ignorant people. They were saying there's no caravan coming, Oscar. There's no caravan. Why are you saying that <clears throat> there is a caravan coming? There's no caravan, Oscar. <clears throat> There's no caravan, Oscar. Bam. <laughs> a caravan on the 30th of June, it was speculated to move, and it started moving, people. And uh, <clears throat> this just happened. The caravan got stopped by the Honduran authorities. And this is what is going on. It says uh, right here, uh, Honduran police dissolved the migrant caravan headed to the U.S. Uh, the Honduran police have dissolved the migrant caravan on the highway leading to Guatemala this Wednesday that had left the previous day from San Pedro Sula to the United States, thus uh, frustrating the first uh, great migratory movement from Central America. 
uh, during the coronavirus pandemic. The migrants, about 100, including children, started the march early Tuesday from the great metropolitan central of San Pedro Sula with the intention of crossing to the border to in the Corinthian in the current to the reach of the United States. Here you see the uh, barricade uh, that is uh, the customs of Honduras uh, to cross to Guatemala. This is the the uh, the the national uh, the federal police of the uh, country of Honduras. That is uh, the obligation for them is to stop to stop the caravans. What is happening with the caravans? The instruction right now is to El Salvador, not let nobody out from El Salvador, not let nobody out from the Triangle of Central America. That is Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador. The caravans are starting <coughs> in Honduras, in San Pedro Zula. That, that is the place where they are you know, organizing, and that is the headquarters of caravans. Uh, they got stopped. They got stopped by the Honduras government. That is a great job. <clears throat> Apparently, they now understand that this pandemic, it will get more difficult and it, get ex and, extend my and it will extend more if we, need, if we let people start coming in, coming in, coming in, coming in, and coming in. So <clears throat> what does this mean? It means that uh, the Triangle of uh, Central America is doing their job. They're not letting nobody out. And also the National Guard of Mexico has the instructions on not to let nobody in. Due to the fact that not only there's a threat for a 5% uh, tariff, not only that, but there is, you know, a lot of other political issues that they're being handled right now. If it's, you know, migrants to uh, move. So that is you know, for everybody that it was wondering if there was a caravan or not, yes, they were, and they were moving, and they got stopped. So, last topic that I want to touch on you guys, and this is a topic that nobody is talking about. We have only been talking for almost two hours, but uh, <clears throat> I'm going to try to rest my voice on this one for a little bit. Okay. This is a topic that nobody's talking about right now. And it's sad. And I will tell you why it's sad, because everybody's talking about COVID. Everybody's talking about, you know, Joe Biden up for 14 points. Everybody's talking about what China is doing. Everybody's talking about la, 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 li, 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 lu, 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 lu. And nobody's talking about this. And it is sad that a soldier from the United States got assassinated and nobody's talking about it in Texas. It's sad. It's really sad. Vanessa Guillen, woman charged uh, over missing soldier killed with a hammer. So this woman was assassinated by a hammer. The guy, uh, the guy that's possibly assassinated her, uh, suicide himself. That is what they're doing according to information. And there is a suspect. And the suspect is uh, a woman has been... Uh, a charge uh, in the case of a missing Texas soldier whose body she is accused of helping to dismember and blurry prosecutors say Cecily Aguilar, 22, faces one count of conspiracy to temper with evidence of the disappearance of private first class Vanessa Guillen. Mrs. Guillen, 20, was last seen on the 22nd of April at the Fort Hood military base where she worked. Uh, human remains, uh, believed to be hers, were found in Bell County earlier this week. Fort Hood officials named 20-year-old Aaron David Robinson as the main suspect in Mrs. Guillen's disappearance on Thursday. Investigation said that the suspect, a junior soldier at Fort Hood, killed himself as police closed in on him after filling in post Tuesday. Suspect in the U.S. missing soldier case took own life. While law enforcement agencies attempted to make a contact with the suspect in killing Texas, Specialist Robinson displayed a weapon and took his own life. Damon Phelps of the U.S. Army Criminal Investigation Division said at a news conference on Thursday, Mr. Guillen's family has called for a congressional investigation into a Fort Hood's base. They allege that Mrs. Guillen has been harassed by someone with her unit. But officials have said they have no report to indicate she was sexually harassed or assaulted. Nobody say nothing about this. 
I want to put something out there. So I want to ask somebody. I want to ask a particular somebody. And I want to ask them where they are. Where's Black Lives Matter right now? Do you guys know where's Black Lives Matter? This is a Hispanic American. Do you guys know where's Black Lives Matter? <clears throat> You guys know? I'm asking a question. I will, I will, uh, uh, will, uh, I will wait. I will wait a few seconds. Do you guys know where's Black Lives Matter right now? Protesting this. Have you heard? Black Lives Matter? This is not the first time. It goes on constantly on base. Worse. Do you guys know where Black Lives Matter is protesting for the Hispanic American that just got killed? Are they protesting outside of Texas for, you know, for abuse? An assassination with a hammer. Orally. But they want the Hispanics to reunite together with Black Lives Matter. Where are you? I'm asking you a question. Somebody a Black Lives Matter in here? This has nothing to do with Black Lives Matter in our 400 years. It's an Hispanic. I'm just asking a question. Do you guys know where they are? Do you guys have seen? Have you guys seen Antifa? This is national news. It's a soldier. They got assassinated by a stalker and by a harasser. Change the, flip the script. And I will get into a race thing. I'm brown. I have the ability to do so. Because this is an Hispanic American. It's brown and she's like me. She's a Mexican American. It's brown and she's like me. And I will flip the script. Hell yeah, I will flip the script. Hell yeah, I will flip the script. Let me flip the script. So let's just say, for an example, that this lady right here, God rest her soul, and God and God let her God be in peace. But let us flip the script right here. And let us just say that this lady was not Hispanic American. That this lady was black American right now. <clears throat> what do you think it would happen? What do you think? What do you think would have happened? What do you think? Nobody's protesting right now. Nobody. Nobody cares about the Hispanic American soldier that she was wearing a soldier's outfit to protect her country. A Mexican-American, another one. And nobody's protesting for the injustice that it was done to her. But if you flip the script, 
and if she would have been black, what do you think it would happen right now? Believe me. It would have happened a whole different world. <sighs> oh, my God. <laughs> Everybody would have been in that place, you know, protesting. Everybody. Let's flip the script again. What would have happened if this girl was white? Do you think Black Lives Matter will, mat will, will care? Do you think Black Lives Matter will care? Let's flip the script again. This girl would have been Asian. Do you think Black Lives Matter will care? See, with Black Lives Matter and all the Hispanics that they are with Black Lives Matter, that they are a disgrace and they're an embarrassment to Mexicans. But with all these people, <clears throat> when they try to confront a Mexican like me, that I love my, my country of Mexico and I'm a nationalist in my country of Mexico. When they try to confront a guy like me, they can't. They will all yell, 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 yell. But when you get right down to facts, if I sit down with a Black Lives Matter activist and I would tell them, name me one time that you guys have been an activist for a Hispanic American that... This people, it should be national news. This right here. This should be a national news. She wore a uniform. And she represented your country. Hispanic American represented your country. And they're not honoring her debt on finding justice. They're investigating right now. And they're after the other accomplice, but nobody is protesting to find the real justice that is justice in society and abuse into a woman. The man that killed himself, that supposedly killed this woman, it was because of stalking and harassing. Why Black Lives Matter is not protesting because of that? Where are all these feminazis? Where are all these organizations of women that they protest for women's rights and abuse of women and the men abuse women and the men, da, la, la, la. Where are they? Where are all of you? Where are all of you? This is what, this is what Hispanics suffer. The mistreatment of our own race. All this Hispanic Americans that they are with Black Lives Matter. You're not the raza. Ustedes no son raza. Ustedes no representan esto. You don't represent this. You represent your own agenda. You want to defend our people in the United States of America? You got the concept wrong. You need to defend the American people. That you were born in the United States of America. And if you want to defend Mexican Americans, please stop defending. Start. You don't represent us. You're a disgrace for one movement, for one race. This is not about races, it's about unity against abuse of power and abuse of authority. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? I don't get you. Where are you? 
brown parades and all that stuff. On tan, on tan, cabrones. I live over here in Mexico. A mí no me la vas a contar. I live over here in Mexico. You're going to tell me. You're not going to tell me nothing. You're not going to tell me nothing. I know my history. I know my country. I bleed my country. What are you talking about? Where are you guys marching for this soldier? An Hispanic American. That just got killed by another man. Where are you? There's no justice? Where's Black Lives Matter right now? There's no justice? Where is all the Democrats? This is supposed to be more important. I don't even know who was the killer. The killer was black American? Wow. Can you, can somebody, can somebody just affirm that? Uh, Estrellita, can you just affirm that? And if he was, my God, this flips the script more. I need to read it before I confirm it. And if it was like that, I will do just in a specific video to all the Black Lives Matter. I'm taking a little pauses to breed and I'm taking little pauses to just, there was a black, my God. Hijo de tu pinche madre. Woo! So you're telling me Black Lives Matter. Where are you? There's a black American that just killed an Hispanic. Where in the hell are you? Where is your fairness to every race? And there is a fight for every race. Where are you? Where are all these La Raza? Where are all these brown berets? On tan pues cabrones. Where are you? Defendiendo La Raza. Where are you? This is all just a movement for a political agenda. All just a movement for a political agenda. Nobody's protesting. It was a black man ki killed an Hispanic American. A soldier. My God, man. Whoo, man. Whoo. The unfairness and the hypocrisy of these Black Lives Matter BS. This Black Lives Matter BS and all the Hispanics that they are uniting with Black Lives Matter cochinero. Defend your own people. And defend the cause of against police brutality and abuse of power. Where are you with this Hispanic, beautiful American lady that just got killed? They don't say nothing about this black guy that killed this, this soldier right here. Where are you, Black Lives Matter? Where are you? Don't tan. Don't stand. ¿Dónde están la raza? 
¿Dónde están, pues? Los Brown Berets, ¿dónde están? El Chicano Munden, ¿dónde está? Toda la gente que está protestando en las calles para lo de los Black Lives Matter, ¿dónde está con esto? Ahora se dan cuenta cómo los están utilizando. It's amazing how they're using us. And you guys don't understand. This is a Democrat plant movement. Black Lives Matter. A Marxist Democrat plant movement. All of you Hispanics that they were looting and causing riots and they're like, Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter. On time, where are you right here? How do you think the parents of this beautiful lady feel? Facts. Truth. Don't tan. You're a disgrace. Son una verdadera vergüenza. Vergüenza, cabrones, son. Vergüenza son lo que son. Vergüenza. God, people. I will do a video specifically for this. I will rest my voice. I will rest my voice. And I will end this video and I will end this live feed. And I will do specifically a video directed to Black Lives Matter and all the Hispanics that they are not protesting for this in a couple hours. This is a disgrace. Es una verdadera vergüenza. Es una verdadera vergüenza. And more embarrassing is that what would have happened if this girl was white? What would have happened if this girl was Asian? This is not the 400 years. This is about finding justice. And there's none. Make this picture viral. <clears throat> Make this picture viral. And say, where's Black Lives Matter protesting the murder of this Young American soldier by a black American. Uh, you do not need to speak about this. Uh, people are followers, not leaders. Uh, not leaders. That why that's why they follow injustice. I don't agree your comment. I don't I don't understand your comment. I don't understand your comment. How's everybody doing? <clears throat> God bless everybody that is watching. I'm Oscar Blue for Border Network News and America's Voice. We are going on two hours of a show that it was intended to be a little, uh, you know, a little bit like that. Uh, the reason why it was intended to be a little bit like that is uh, because I've been three days away from the microphone reason why I had a throat infection and I'm trying to get a little bit better. I have rested my uh, voice uh, for only uh, <clears throat> you do need you do you do need to speak about this. Oh, okay, you do need to speak. Okay, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> and you know, this uh, I did a show for two hours almost, uh, news that they have been dragged for the past three days. Uh, hopefully this, I've been shadow banned people. They don't let me share more. I, my audience, you know, practically all the time is between 600 to a thousand. Uh, so I will do a video in a few minutes. I uh, will dress my voice. I will clean my face. This really upsets me. This really upsets me because you guys are doing only protest for George Floyd. What is going on with this right here? Nobody's saying anything about it and why Black Lives Matter is not doing anything about it. I want to know. Uh, God bless everybody. We talked about different topics, people, today. We talked about the Hong Kong 
uh, political situation that is happening in China, how other countries are, you know, are backing up Hong Kong. They're supporting Hong Kong on, uh, in the, you know, on the, on the Chinese Communist Party. Communist Party, they, they're trying to take over Hong Kong. The UK is backing up Hong Kong. They told them, hey, you know what? If you 2.6 million, they want to migrate to the UK, it's okay. Australia also. Also the EU, the European Union, and also, uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, also the uh, Taiwan. It also wants to be involved on on, uh, on helping Hong Kong. That's amazing. Also, we talk about, you know, cartel members, how they are, you know, politically and corruptibly involved in our system right here in Mexico and all the, the massacre of the 26 people that uh, just happened two days ago at a shelter and how the shelter you know, they're involved with sicarios and now they're, some shelters are, you know, a smokescreen to make believe that there are, you know, rehab centers, but they're not. They are rehab centers, which they use for drug dealing and also for hiding sicarios. That is what actually happened on this shelter. Supposedly they were hiding some sicarios and they laid every single one of them, the 26 on the floor, and they assassinated all of them. A lot of them, a lot of them were innocent, but a lot of them were uh, strictly involved with the cartel of Santa Rosalia de Lima, that is the cartel that is fighting right now, you know, different cartels like Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generacion and another, you know, cartels. I told you guys two weeks ago, the president AMLO was going to have a really important decision to say about, you know, not being one sided with one organized crime. He's one siding right now with the, with the cartel of Sinaloa and Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generacion. So <clears throat> what he's doing practically is just picking sides and making all the other organizations feel, feel insignificant that which I told you guys it was going to result in a war and that is what is happening in Guanajuato. Uh, this guy by El Marro, a cartel member that they captured their family, got released during the week and after the uh, before the release he threatened the uh, Guanajuato uh, citizens to kill people. He killed more than a hundred in a week and then after that he told the government that he was going to calm down. He did not calm down. He killed three officers which those three officers were directly involved with the detention of their family members. So he not did not comply with his word. Also, another cartel member that got released, El Mochomo, uh, put uh, put you guys audios of the corruption that is going on behind his detention. His mother uh, directly an audio talking to government officials about what it was really happening behind uh, you know this conversation, uh, offering millions and millions of pesos to release him into the population. And that audio I played it. Also, I played you guys actual footage and actual uh, you know uh, <clears throat> description of what happened and the murders and the and the massacre on this uh, uh, rehab center that is in Mexico. Also, we talked about the caravan, how it got stopped. And also, lastly, but not, uh, you know, importantly, this Vanessa Guillen, uh, uh, woman that is being uh, charged over missing soldier killed with a hammer. This uh, soldier, oh my God, man. And I'll put it right here. Cecilia Aguilar faces uh, one count of conspiracy to temper with evidence on the disappearance of private first class Vanessa Guillen. <clears throat> That that is uh, really sad. That that is really sad for everybody that is watching. So God bless everybody that is watching. Thank you so much for joining me on this feed. Uh, I'm Oscar Blue for Border Network News and America's Voice. It was, it has been a pleasure uh, talking to you guys. Uh, and uh, you know, God bless everybody that is watching right now. Uh, follow my page as Oscar Blue at uh, Facebook and also follow my partner's page, uh, uh, Conservative Anthony, and also follow uh, follow me and subscribe to my channel on YouTube. It's Oscar Blue. We will be having a video in a few minutes specifically talking to uh, the organization of Black Lives Matter and what they're going to do with this protest. I don't care what they, when they uh, I don't care what they say. I really don't care what Black Lives Matter says. And I don't really care what La Raza says and what, you know, all these organizations from Chicanos and Hispanos in, in the United States say. What I want to know is that, you know, I want what I really want to know is where you guys at right now with this protest. And this is a really important comment right here. I will address some comments 
before I go. <clears throat> this is a really important comment right here. This right here. Amazing comment. This is an amazing comment. We need to stop putting color before American. You're an American. You are Americans for America. And its principles are against America. <clears throat> the right choice is for freedom and human rights. <clears throat> that is a really important comment. A lot of people get mad when you say all oh, lives matter. It takes away in his, in his uh, <clears throat> denigrating the movement of Black Lives Matter. But we're not supposed to be united only with Black Lives. It's supposed to be all of us together. And this is a really important comment. Thank you so much, Cindy Craig. Thank you so much. God bless you. He's saying we not we need to stop putting color before America, and you are Americans for America, and its principles are against America. So, you know, this is really important. This is what we've been talking about. This is what we have been doing. And this is what we have, we, this is what we need to get better at. This is what we need to get better at. <clears throat> so God bless everybody. <clears throat> I will be live in a few minutes. Give me around 15 minutes. And I will address this uh, situation with this uh, with uh, this murder of this of this uh, young lady, military lady, killed by a black American. I want to know where Black Lives Matter is, and I want to know all the Hispanics and all you know all the La Raza and all the Chicano movements. Where are you guys at? I want to know. Really want to know. So stay safe. And like we always say, people, it was, has been a pleasure talking to you guys uh, today. I will do a live feed later on this afternoon in Spanish. First of all, I will do this live feed uh, for addressing the murder of our of your soldier in, in Texas by, you know, a black American in this uh, situation that is occurring right now. God bless you all. Stay safe and always remember peace and love everybody because always your country's first.